As always, just a, a little bit of housekeeping. This call is being recorded. Um, so if you do not want to participate in this call, um, suggest you leave now. And as well, we have the antitrust policy notice as part of the Linux Foundation that we have to fight um, off. Um, today on the agenda, we have three topics. Um, we have a little bit of an update on 1.3. So 1.3 is out uh, two weeks ago, and we released 1.3. We're going to talk a little bit about the features that were added to 1.3. Um, we're also going to talk about, I'm going to show the new documentation website um, that we've picked up the new Hyperledger template, and then any other topics uh, that the community wants to raise and discuss. All right, I'll go straight into presentation. And feel free to interrupt me at any point in time um, as, I, as I cover these topics. So yay, Hyperledger Firefly 1.3 is here. Um, just over a year after the 1.2 release, um, we released a new version of, of Firefly. It has a lot in it. Um, and yeah, big thanks to Nico. Um, you know, he's no longer participating in the project, but big thanks to him um, to get this, this, this version out. So what's new in, in Firefly? Um, there's been a lot of work um, to make the, the runtime a lot more modular. Uh, one of the pieces of work uh, was to decouple <clears throat> the way the orchestrators within Firefly communicate with the blockchain connectors. Um, so, the, so between the Firefly namespaces that run in Firefly core and the different plugins, uh, Nico did a really in, interesting piece of work to create multiple event streams. So in order, so each namespace would have a its own event stream to communicate with each blockchain connector it's connected to instead of using the same event stream across different namespaces. So here we have more isolation across the namespaces, and this is a really good um, step to achieving high availability, which is a a an issue we've had for a while. We've called active active. Um, I think that will We'll pick up in the future in, in, in other calls. A uh, great shout out to um, the Tezos connector coming to life as part of 1.3. We have a few of the maintainers here um, that have contributed that test connector. It's great to see. We've interacted with that community. We, we gave a, a talk um, in the Tezos community about Firefly. So it's great to see um, that integration. Uh, Andrew contributed um, the Firefly Improvement Proposal 17, where you can pin a data transfer to any smart contract function. So this extends the batch pin available um, feature that Firefly has been using for a long time as part of multi-party setup. It extends it to be able to use your own smart contract and, and pin data on any smart contract function, really, across uh, different blockchain technologies, right? Uh, both EVM and, and Fabric there. We also have made a lot of uh, big changes to the blockchain toolkit, connected toolkit, the FFTM, uh, the Firefly Transaction Manager, really big piece of work by Peer um, to, to make it more performant, have a pluggable persistence layer with Postgres SQL. I'll dive a little bit deeper into that and a lot of changes into how transaction summaries um, are created and stored in, in that tool. We've also made significant enhancements to the Kubernetes community samples that are based on Helm. Uh, Nico put together and updated those Helm charts for the release. He made it a lot simpler to be able to deploy the Firefly stack and to also deploy the dependencies that go up with that stack, such as different blockchain nodes, IPFS nodes, and, and the other plugins. Along that, we've also really integrated a lot better with Hyperledger Besu. We have you on the call, Matt. That's both a maintainer of Firefly and a maintainer of Besu. And we've, we've worked a lot on performance <clears throat> and, and making sure that the Firefly stack can integrate um, with Besu and also enhancing the stack for problem diagnosis, for um, getting receipts of transactions, for um, getting more information on revert errors, and et cetera. Uh, that we can touch upon as well. I think that was one of the topics a few months ago in the community calls, and then we, we got to that, and there's even a, a document um, that was added by Matt on, on that. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Okay. So one of the things that I looked at before this call was looking a little bit at the, at the Linux Foundation. Um, they create a set of insights 
uh, for the project and, and the contributions. Um, you can take a look, I'll, I'll leave the link here around all the different contributions. I, I, I filtered, oh, the filter's gone, but I filtered exactly for the release date of the previous release, which was the 6th of, of February. The contributors have been growing. Um, there's been new contributors. Um, the, it, it talks a little bit about the insights around how active all, all the PRs or the issues. I'll let you uh, dive into that. But one of the big things is we have 64 new contributors, which is exciting. And this is across all the Firefly repos. And we have six new maintainers that have been, um, sorry, voted in uh, during during that time frame, and have been added to uh, different um, repos and with different levels of, of access. So yeah, I'll, I'll show the slides afterwards and you can take a look at the insights provided by the Linux Foundation. So one of the big uh, pieces um, that I've mentioned is this namespace isolation. So previously we had a single event stream for each blockchain plugin. So if you had a namespace configured, for example, to talk to um, BESU, which you have one transaction manager and you wanted to reuse that transaction manager in namespace two, we're using the same event stream. In this case, it's a web socket that communicates between Firefly core and transaction manager and uses one subscription to listen to all the events. In this case, what we've done in 1.3 as part of this work is we've made, we create one event stream per namespace. Um, so now we have complete isolation for that event stream. We can replay events specific to that namespace instead of sharing um, the same event stream across both namespaces. And as we talked about earlier, this promotes high availability. So if we wish to in the future, as, as we want to work towards being able to run multiple Firefly core runtimes, having that isolation in place is going to help us a lot. There is a section in the I could talk a little bit to this one, if we can. Yeah. Go ahead, Pierre. So, so the work that we did, um, uh, uh, Andrew and Nico and myself, um, in, in this release, it's kind of hard to state the, the size of it. It was um, the, the the listener moving was the big thing that changed um, to become independent. But really what this ended up being is now inside of a Firefly runtime, right? you've got one Go process running inside of there. Every namespace is running completely independently. There's no overlap. The config for it is read independently. The batch listener works independently. The, the, um, the streaming from the different connectors is completely independent. The connectors are namespace aware, so that they there's no dependency when if so something reloads, it might affect another. So that really is um, uh, it's been a journey. Some of this work happened in 1.2, the big piece happened in, in 1.3. It's it's a really significant step forward in runtime because what it means is um, it's now completely modular, right? There's there's just lots of little modules that are running and they happen to all run in the same in the same runtime. Um, another piece of work that happened in 1.3, we sort of not claimed it here because it didn't get pushed all the way through, was leadership election has been implemented in the Go code base. So we have the ability for these, um, these, these sort of modular namespace runtimes to be leader elected by, elite, by Kubernetes is the, the default implementation of a leader election, but pluggable like everything in Firefly. So what this means is you can have, um, theoretically still, that um, you can have lots of active runtimes all doing database queries, all supporting read queries, active, active, and each namespace will be um, running its listeners only on any or only on one of those um, runtimes at any given point in time. But if that one goes down, it doesn't need to that runtime doesn't have to fail over. The next one will just 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 pick up and and run. So it it gives the ability. Um, there's some impact on HA, but the really big ability it's going to give, and, and we expect to have this in the next release, the ability to sort of have one big server that scales across more than one VM. So you can scale beyond just the size of one VM to multiple VMs and have active, 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 active running. So it's a really, really significant piece of piece of work, even though there's still a little bit that's sort of coming out. Um, uh, into a hopefully a, a patch release that this will close out in. 
Awesome. Thanks, Pierre. And yeah, from if you want to look at the migration guide, um, it will explain that not a lot of breaking changes here. The only thing that changes the the naming of those event streams um, has changed. But yeah, really, really great significant work here. So next one on the list um, is the FRA, uh, the, the Firefly Improvement Proposal um, 17. This is what to, to be able to tie any arbitrary piece of off-chain data to any arbitrary piece of on-chain logic. So Firefly has had this for a long time, this ability to be able to perform aggregation between off-chain data and on-chain data and have ordering based on on-chain events. Uh, we've now extended that to be able to use your own custom contracts and to be able to pin data on your own custom contracts. Before we had specific Firefly contract, we watched the batch pin contract, which drives all the private messaging and broadcast messaging. But now we've, we've enabled this to, to be more customizable from an end user perspective um, to, to any contract. Any thoughts from the maintainers on that one? I don't know if, was Andrew on and wanted to talk about that one? Otherwise I can. I do not think Andrew's on for that one. Okay, yeah, let me let me talk then a little bit more about this. This again was another big piece of piece of work. Um, but it is um, it's, I guess it's an interesting area. Um, so the core thing that Firefly does is be um, your ability to connect to any any blockchain and invoke any smart contract and stream any of that. So that's its core like mission in in life. There's a secondary thing that it has baked into it. Um, which is a pattern for messaging and data um, coordination, where um, let's say you're building like a, um, multiple parties are all going to use Firefly, you've got an application on top of it, and you want to do workflow um, orchestration between those between those parties. Um, you've got your identity system that you've plugged into Firefly, you've got your transport that you've plugged into Firefly for HTTP or Kafka or some end-to-end -end encrypted messaging, all of those things are pluggable. Um, I can now um, I can now have workflow um, where the order is proved by the blockchain and the messages are flowing off off chain, but they'll be processed in the order of the blockchain. So that's very powerful. And um, in I think one but one of Firefly, we allowed. Um, with token connectors, we allowed token connectors to sort of have a special workflow so that you could make the blockchain transaction that was coordinated with that message be not just um, a pin of, um, but also like a timestamp, but it could be a transfer of a token. And what this piece of work did was it said, so that can be any logic on the, um, on the blockchain. So I can have really powerful, interesting logic on the blockchain that isn't limited just to tokens. Um, and I can have the processing of the data um, be coordinated with the processing of the event that's emitted from that, from that smart contract. So the smart contract, the blockchain stays in control as it always is, it's the source of truth. But as a, a, you know, as a party in a system that's not just got to worry about the blockchain, I'm an enterprise, I've got core system integration, I want to trigger off of this and do something, I can not take my part in the ecosystem, like decide to perform a payment or process an invoice or deliver some goods until I've not just received the blockchain but I've also received the data that can't go on the blockchain along with it. So that's what's so powerful about this is it's like two streams of information. It's the engines coordinating um, two things happening, the receipt of data and the receipt of the order and confirmation from the blockchain. So this is about putting the blockchain in charge um, for sophisticated transactions and still having data that can't go anywhere near the, near the blockchain. Now, um, I think this is a journey that there's lots more happening in the future on sort of off-chain, on-chain, data coordination, privacy. Um, I think we'll see a lot more on this going forwards, um, but this was a significant step on the, on the journey, um, uh, sort of 
um, enhancing this sort of messaging support that's baked into, into Firefly. I hope that was useful. Yeah, super useful, Peter. Any questions about that? Awesome. All right. I guess this one as well, Peter, you, I'll, I'll give a, a quick um, overview and then I think you're the, you're the main contributor here um, in terms of the persistent. But we've, we've enhanced the persistence layer um, in, in the Firefly Transaction Manager. One of the biggest changes was ju just adding a more pluggable uh, persistence layer by adding support for PostgreSQL. Uh, before we're using LevelDB in the previous versions of, of, of this toolkit. Um, and we've also restructured a little bit the, the way the transaction history, not a little bit, but substantially, uh, the way transaction history is, is stored. There's a, I've, I've linked the PR there because there's some changes to the information returned by APIs, uh, the way the history, there's a query parameter to be able to change the history that gets returned, the new version of it, the sub statuses of transactions. So really look into that. And we've also ported a lot of this into our Firefly common layer, which underpins a lot of the Golang uh, based um, services that we provide in Firefly with that those capabilities for Postgres. Anything there, Pierre? Well, um, did we also have a slide on the Basu um, Firefly integration? Because maybe I'll talk about the two in com combination. We, have a um, um, we don't have a complete slide on Basu. I have a bullet point at the end, but if you want to cover it here. Yeah, no, maybe I'll cover it here. So I think it's probably other maintainers have done the heavy lifting that are on the call. Um, Chung's on the call and Matt Whitehead's on the call. Um, so this is part of a really significant piece of work. Um, so Firefly is a very pluggable enterprise tool and the blockchain connector in particular is a really pluggable framework. Um, I think we'll talk about Tessos in a little bit more detail as you know, an example of some another ecosystem using the connector. Um, but it's pluggable in lots of different ways. It's pluggable with the persistence layer now. It's pluggable um, with what we've, we used to call the policy engine, but we call it the transaction manager endpoint. And there's like a um, pretty, pretty good open source implementation of that. But the intention is that there's lots of behaviors people might want to put on top of there and lots of scaling characteristics. So it's like it's a place where this really is an open source um, extensible project um, and a really interesting piece of work that I guess sort of taking the Firefly hat off just for a second and talking about the Collido hat and collaboration there. The um, sort of Collido is one member of the ecosystem. We, 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 we made a bunch of um, contributions into the open source that included this, but lots of other pieces around it, around problem diagnosis and other pieces, which were based on us really hammering, absolutely brutally, brutally hammering Firefly to go as fast and as reliably as it possibly could with Bessie. And um, I guess just to share where we're at, Firefly can go just as fast as Hyperledger Caliper, for example, when driving Hyperledger Bessie now. So, so um, this release is like a, a myriad of tiny tweaks all over the code bases and in the microservices that mean that, you know, if you use Hyperledger Besu and Hyperledger Firefly together, um, we've sort of, the community's proved that like you can get the absolute most out of, out of Besu. Um, and things like being able to diagnose it by seeing what's happening on the 10 steps of getting a transaction through, the transaction history bit of this, things like having a much higher performance persistence layer for Postgres um, compared to LevelDB, which just couldn't cope with, the, with the, um, the types of queries that are needed. LevelDB is very high performance, but there's certain things that it does really well and certain things it doesn't do really well. Um, like that, that whole piece of work it's sort of a hidden hundreds and hundreds of hours that, that have been taken up along this, this journey. Um, and um, yeah, so I guess I'm rambling a bit, but I don't know if um, Matt or Chung wanted to say anything more on, on, on that sort of better together bit of work that we've done. Uh, yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, yeah, I think I think it maybe it's it's useful to kind of reflect more generally something we've seen in Hyperledger Besu 
uh, workshops and financial uh, institution workshops around Ethereum uh, have generally been that um, the the market is landing on Besu as the the de facto EVM node for for enterprises, um, and I think that has led to a lot of the work that you've talked about, Peter. Um, it's encouraged us to um, certainly as a Besu maintainer, I spent a lot of time on hardening and and that brings with it some performance benefits because stability of Besu, I don't think was was great 12 or 18 months ago. Um, and as you say, a lot of the testing we've done has been combining Firefly and, and Besu as a, a really great kind of combination for um, for um, EVM-based integrated networks. Um, so yeah, I think that's the only thing I'd, I'd add right now. You, you'll see that um, there have been some PRs specifically around pulling in Besu specific um, behaviors in, into the EVM connect layer. And I think I'd like to see more of that where, where we're seeing Besu evolve for enterprise users and adding new features that you're not likely to see in Geth or Quorum. Um, then I, I'd like us to see Firefly continue to kind of make the best use of any enhancements Besu adds so that again we can we can continue to improve performance between the, the combination of Firefly and Bessie together. Yeah, I think that's all of that for now. Chung, feel free to um yeah so another thing that has happened in the Firefly transaction manager is um we used to have a plugin component called um policy manager. Um that's been refactored quite a lot uh, into something new called transaction manager. The reason we did that is um um Based on the experiment that we've done in Clido, uh, we find the boundary between the common code that manages manages the transactions in the engine uh, and the handler that orchestrating all the transactions of me. Sorry, not really sure what happened there. You might find everyone's dying back in. Yeah, people are dying back in. Um, I think the Hyperledger Foundation person left. Normally it's a bot that records uh, the meaning. Oh, that's yeah, maybe Enrique, um, if you can remember who that was, maybe follow up with them offline. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'll share my screen again and we can carry on. Sorry, Chan. That's all right. Um, oh, okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, so just, just continue. Um, we we uh, re-established the interface that is more powerful so that the transaction handler itself has more control and access to the transaction database um, we need to perform contact logic um, that to have a better transaction management logic or gas station API. All of those are reflected on the Firefly transaction um, manager documentation. So if you're interested, do take a look. And also there are a few contributors from the Discord as well uh, start contributing on the transaction manager layer, which is very good to say. So if you have any uh, ideas and want to pick up any new issues in those repos, um, do comment and let us know. We'll give you help if, if you need. Awesome. Anything else there? I think uh, also substantial work went into the Firefly performance CLI to be able to run those performance tests across the transaction manager and be able to, to find those, those bottlenecks there. All right. Next one, Tezos connector. Um, I believe we did have a maintainer of, of the connector, um, but I think they might have dropped. Um, so yeah, new test connector created by two new maintainers to Firefly. It builds on top of the blockchain toolkit and 
Yeah, it's a really interesting connector. Um, Tesla is, is, is a very different chain um, to some of the ones we've seen before. And the speciality of this connector is that it includes a remote transaction signing. So it's a capable of integrating with what's called a signatory. And this signatory has different um, abilities to sign using different key management solutions like AWS key management solutions or Azure key management solutions um, and be able to um, submit transactions to to the Tezos chain. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the maintainers, but I wanted to get a feel on them. But anyway, it's great to see how Firefly is uh, entering new new ecosystems, and I'm sure there'll be more collaboration there in the future. And there's a webinar I can I can link to where we where we went to the Tezos community and we run a, a Firefly presentation that Nico ran um, a few months ago. Awesome. I wanted, yeah, those were the, the biggest contributions, but I think there was other substantial contributions that, that made the ecosystem a lot better as a whole. I think one of them were last year we did batching of, of delivery events for subscriptions. This was for webhooks and websockets. So this was to increase the throughput. When you're listening to events from Firefly, you can now receive batches of events and you can configure your batch size um, and, and, how often, and how much you want to read ahead. And, and it will and it will work with all your filtering capabilities that already exist in, in the subscription layer. We also enhanced uh, the API. We added a, a, a new enhancement to the events API that Sam added to do additional filtering for events. One substantial change that you will see in the migration guide is that we've separated define and publish uh, for token pools and contract interfaces. So when you create um, a token pool in, in Firefly and that Firefly has been enabled in multi-party mode, by default before 1.3, that token pool would be published to the other members of, of the network. And the same would happen with contract interfaces, right? Contract APIs that, that drive the contract APIs. Now there is a, there's a separation where you can define your token pool and if it hasn't been published, you can still delete it um, from, from your local Firefly node. Once you've published it, that will get broadcasted to the other members of the multi-party network, and, and you won't be able to delete again, because at that point, there will be a transaction on-chain um, for those, those artifacts. We also did a lot of work uh, in, in to do database optimizations, so inserting, um, inserting batches of events uh, in, in one database operation in Firefly. That was, again, I, for the push towards better performance. Andrew recently had the ability to cancel a batch stuck in dispatch. So before you might, you, you sometimes, so batches are a concept in Firefly where we group together a set of off-chain and on-chain coordination. And in a batch, you could have one batch pin um, operation and you could have a, a, an amount of off-chain coordination, private messages or broadcast messages. And sometimes if you're never going to receive that off-chain data, that batch can get stuck. And, and there was no way for you to very easily clear that batch and it would be stuck in pending. So as part of the um, improvement proposal 17, uh, we've had the ability to be able to cancel that batch in the case where, where, where it's stuck. Along with that, we did, um, we up, uh, upgraded Golang, we fixed loads of CVs across many repos, especially the token connectors that are JavaScript based. And as we mentioned, we did a lot of best improvements, not only around performance, but also around revert reasoning that um, Matt wrote a document on that and also handling receipts better. And I think there's a lot more work in that area for the future. And just to be clear, the CVE was uh, dependencies, not, not CVEs in Firefly. Correct, yes, these were all dependencies that pulled in by the different uh, repositories. Finally, I wanted to mention a little bit about the migration concerns. We've, we've written a whole guide um, for migration. One of two of the important ones is Docker image permissions have changed. So if you are going to um, upgrade to 1.3 and you're going running this in a Dockerized environment or, or, or in a Kubernetes environment, you have noticed that we've added um, different permissions to our, to our Docker files, different users. So it might not run with the default um, configuration that you have. So we have a, a guide on which images and how you'd be able to change that. Fin finally, what I mentioned earlier, the fact that now contract interfaces and APIs and token pools have a distinct step uh, when you create them and by default they're unpublished. 
and you will have to either pass in a, a parameter to publish them when you create them, or there's an API to publish them afterwards. And as always, um, please join the Discord and activity on GitHub is really good. I'm monitoring the Discord every day, so feel free to post messages there and, 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 and contribute. I've also started triaging um, issues on GitHub around uh, good first issues for contributors. So if you know anyone or, or you feel like you, you want to come along and, and um, pick up issues, just feel free to message me on Discord or even tag me in the issue and we can, we can make that happen. Okay, any other questions on the 1.3 updates or any other remarks? So, so maybe just a, a um, maybe it's this section, or maybe I'm moving on to the next topic, but um, just just thinking about things that didn't make it into 1.3 but are still ongoing. Um, we talked about sort of rather than thinking I, in this session, I don't think we're going to have like thinking out big next things. Um, but stuff that's just on the 1.3 journey. Uh, we talked about the journey to, of active active HA and closing that out that like we sort of we can see the end of sight insight there um there was another piece of work that didn't didn't quite make the cut um um but expecting to go in which was the ability to subscribe to lots of different um blockchain events in one sort of one group um and it allows you to be sure that you're going to get absolute ordering it's like a, a contract between Paul and the blockchain connector that you will get absolute ordering on the blockchain across all of those different um different event types um so that's something that um i think it's sort of like three quarters of the way there but we just didn't block 1.34 so i know that one's in in flight um trying to think what else is there, Enrique? Can you think of any others that um, were sort of notable, didn't quite make it, that might be coming in a point release? Um, I was just going to mention one that came out around custom error handling, Peter. Mm, uh, yes. Um, so we discussed on the previous contributor call that um, we didn't have clear docs. We don't think we had docs at all, really, which talked about how errors coming back from the, the BESU node, if it's a BESU node under the covers, are parsed uh, and or handled. Um, and we know that there is a gap there around custom errors in terms of the actual functionality and, and the, the option in Firefly to, if you have the ABI for the um, for the error, to decode them completely. Um, so we did do um, the, the kind of docs part of that to make sure we comprehensively describe in the docs all of the places where errors can come back and how they're decoded and what you what you will see based on what you have enabled on your BESU node. Um, we also disabled uh, the use of the kind of fairly heavyweight debug trace transaction function by default to avoid that causing issues on a on a um, like a, produ a production chain. Um, but there, I think there was one item left, which was to to decode custom errors in Firefly when the ABI is available. Yeah. I think the, the, the one I think that's going to come soon is also multi-party status. I think we're working towards that, um, around making the, the experience for registering multi-party and, and making sure that the status is, is more clear um, for users. There's also an open API change that I have to make the open APIs more concise as well um, as part of the Fireflies that I think will, will make the next cut, the next cut hopefully. Yeah, I also want to mention, I didn't have a slide on this, but I'll share an issue. We did a lot of performance testing in this release. I think Nico and I spent weeks um, performance testing and, and running the Perf CLI, and we did discover a performance bug in the transaction manager that we, we fixed for 1.3. Um, so yeah, that's, that is substantial. There is a lot of documentation around the numbers we got, the rough rough idea of, of, of the performance of running Firefly there. But yeah, it's a good, good, uh, good steer here. I think um, maybe in the next community call, we should talk about what's next and what's what's the things in the horizon for for our next release. All right. Um, one other thing I wanted to show um, is the new doc site. Um, so Hyperledger has given us a, a template 
um, for, for documentation. Nico um, has built our website and has changed the, the way the GitHub actions work in order to build this new template and, 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 the, and the new fonts and, and all of that and the new themes. It should have the same content as, as before. We still have the head where we have the main, the docs built from the main branch and we did cut a 1.3 uh, documentation and yeah please let me know if you have any any problems with the with the documentation um if, if you go through it just raise an issue or, or tag me on discord and we can we can take a look at that and as i mentioned earlier um if you go on the release notes there is a, a 1.3 migration guide that was written by nico and sam around different um considerations for migration that we that we spoke about today Awesome. Um, I'll stop share there, and we can we can move on to any topics that that the community uh, want to raise. Okay. I don't think there's anything there. I did see the message on the chat. Thanks, Matt, for that. Um, around the the Sean, I'll, I'll reach out to him, and then I will see how we can get the two recordings and published into the um, community call notes. Okay, if there's nothing else there, um, I'll close the call. Thanks, thanks everyone for attending today.